One of Claudia Jones's enduring legacies is the Notting Hill Carnival. Now, I'm sure she'd have a few things to say about its current incarnation, especially the role of big business in shaping and molding the event. But it's important to remember that carnival in Caribbean cultures has always been more than just a commercial vehicle. Classic carnival, particularly those of the 19th and early 20th century, was a highly coded spectacle weaving together visual cunning, religious metaphor, social criticism and political agency. To speak of the carnivalesque today is still an invitation to look beyond the surface, the dancing, the costume and music, and identify deeper levels of meaning at work. So in the spirit of carnival, I want to offer a talk that focuses on hidden meanings and their profound political potential. The title of this lecture comes from the work of radical black feminist Audre Lorde. It implies that serious counter politics are required for addressing the master's house or what black feminist bell hooks coins as white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. I love the fact that African-American intellectual culture is willing to out white power and not dance around the edges. Lord's counter-politics demands new thoughts and actions, an epistemic repudiation of masculinist ways of knowing and political practice. She continues that without this kind of paradigm shift, only narrow, allowable change will occur. What is intriguing is that Lord's new tools emerge through a dialogue on difference. In her life and struggle as a black lesbian feminist, she navigates between various feminist camps to provide a non-dominant politics and enable all women to move from patriarchy's divide and conquer to a feminist mantra of define and empower. I like the fact that I like the idea that by moving in between, we can forge new potent tools, weaponry to dismantle oppressive structures. I'll return to this idea later as it's something I've applied to the complex in between of being a working class Caribbean man in a white middle class professional world. I'm on Lord's side. That's the only bit of religion in here. Lord's side, Lord's side. I'm on Lord's side. As an African Caribbean man in Britain, I'm also keen to dismantle the master's house, fight against race, class, gender, and sexual orientation discrimination. Now, I may not be a radical lesbian feminist, but as African American cultural critic Mark Anthony Neal has noted, progressive black men must develop what he terms new black male politics that are inclusive, egalitarian, and non-dominant. In most recent years, I have focused on documentary film as a vehicle to define and empower. Since 1999, I've been involved in the making of 15 films, 13 of which I've presented. The project began in part as a challenge, a bit of a dare. Nearly 10 years ago, I appeared on Channel 4's Right to Reply to criticize the lack of meaningful factual television aimed at people of African descent. In an off-the-cuff remark, the, the then commissioning editor for youth programs and the person responsible for the commissioning of Badass Television, remember that? Badass Television? The program I was criticizing dared me to try and do better. So what I want to do this evening is reflect on this project. And the question I want to explore this evening is, to what extent is it possible to make use of the commercial television documentary to dismantle the master's house. Conversely, the hardest films to get made, in my experience, are those that try to unlock the workings of whiteness. We'll talk about whiteness. As I said earlier, the most important bit of dismantling that you can do is to out whiteness. But what does it mean to talk about the outing of whiteness? Well, whiteness is how we imagine the category of white to work in the world. Historically, whiteness emerged as part of the West global expansion and imperialist project. 
It is, however, historically contingent and therefore subject to change over time. You can be white at one moment and then raced like the rest of us in the next. These outings are rare. Normally it's a case of encoding the way that whiteness as privilege get woven, gets woven into discussions of history, economics and politics. For example, in Empire Pays Back, I wanted to explore how the racial terror of slavery had been sanitized in recent British history and made to be a black problem. There is a long and distinguished political uh, praxis that in, our, in our history that takes place by slowly dismantling oppressive forces through the subliminal, a deeper level of engagement. I have attempted in a small way to try and out-whiteness, to demonstrate that it can be done in the commercial documentary in a small way. A flea bite on the beast of whiteliness. But as every flea knows, you can take a bite, but there's a good chance you'll get squashed or swiped. As I said at the start, I was not sure if Claudia Jones would be happy with the state of the Notting Hill Carnival, but I am sure that she would be keen on the spirit of classic carnival that lives on with those of us seeking out new ways to ensure a change of power relations by putting on the mask in order to unmask oppression. Thank you. Yes, Robert, thanks very much for the uh, most thought-worthy exposition. You've raised the question of how you survive within white-dominated institutions. Um, a recent history post uh, Windrush is that we had strong solidarity in our communities because of the pressure we were under. That crucible forced us to create campaigns, organisations to deal with policing, and all kinds of other exploitation. Now we come, we've moved into the system you know, we're producers of TV programs and so on. We see it as a professional issue. And the links between us as professionals and the community become forever thinner. How are we going to re-establish those solidarities between those we're making picture, uh, programs about, you know, whether they're people in the city or whether they're young people on the states, and you or I as professional, how are we going to rebuild those solidarities? I think, I think the answer to that is quite simple, through conversation. I think you have to keep the lines of communication open and have meaningful dialogue across all barriers in the community. That's why I've never stayed in the academy and seen that as one place in which you teach. You can't do that. One, if you're at any major, any major university in this day and age, apart from maybe South Bank or um, City or Metropolitan, uh, the vast majority of undergraduates are white. So you have to find new places and spaces where you can be in dialogue. I have a feeling that um, if slave trade had been the other way around, Africa would still be very precious today. <laughs> Do you, are you satisfied with what our leaders have done in terms of trying to talk for liberation, or are we just satisfied with effects like uh, conversion of slave trade in the West? I think that's a big, uh, big question. Uh, um, when we made that film two years ago, it was to spark discussion about the nature of reparations and to see reparations as being not just about apology, but about compensation. My sense is that much of this year has been an attempt to re-enslave me in a kind of mental slavery sort of way, because according to Orlando Patterson, who teaches at Harvard, a slavery is about social death, and you create social death by cutting people off from their history and getting them to act out their subordination. Uh, my sense is that many of the events that took place this year were distortion of history. You, you know, you ask uh, kids on the street and they think that Africans traded each other and Wilberforce stopped it, you know? And, um, you know, I thought the ceremony at Westminster Abbey was an attempt to get Africans to legitimate their subordination asking African people to pray for the forgiveness of slavery. Who, who are they praying for? Who are they praying to? It, you know, I thought that the theology failed to do justice to the enormity of the situation. So my reading of the year has been that it's an attempt to do mental slavery, to make us intellectually non-beings, corrupting the history, and then us, have us dance and sing um, uh, songs that demean our history and our culture and our personality. Mm -hmm.